What's going on guys, it's the Bulls and the Bears here with a weekly game plan video for the wheel strategy. As always, we're going to start looking at SPY to see what we think is going to happen this week. What kind of movement do we think we're going to see this week? And then we can kind of determine how we should play the wheel. We're doing it week by week, so I only care about the next five days of price action. And well, I'm a little lost, kinda. You know, I, I we had this massive rally the past few days. We broke out of this wedge. So this bearish ascending wedge is pretty much nullified now. I thought maybe we'd close within it and have like a fake break of this wedge, but no, we closed out of it. And SPY is looking pretty bullish. Now, where do I see SPY going? Well, I don't think we're done with the bear market. I don't think we're done with this major downtrend. I think it'd be a reasonable belief to think that we'd climb up to maybe the 200 moving average, or if not, the top of this orange wedge. To me, that's what the next stop is. Now, this could easily retrace and sell off beforehand. Because um, I, I, I am always weary of that. I'm always concerned that we're just going to drop. Because I don't think this is over. This could be a combination of short selling, uh, of short covering, and just people rejoicing over the cooler than expected CPI. But I don't think that's gonna. this is going to last long. Um, I could easily see a, a moment like this happening where we push up very strongly into strong resistance and then boom, new leg of the bear market just completely selling off hard. I just don't want to get caught on the wrong side of that of that move. It's really about timing, um, which makes it difficult for this week because the names that I've been watching are at elevated levels after this rally and spy. So... They're not, I can't really sell puts at good areas of support. Let's look at DocuSign, for example, um, up at $53 per share, way up here. For me to sell a put and get a good premium, it'd have to be like the 48 strike, which is like right here. That's not a good area of support. That's within the previous body, like the previous day's body. It's not like it's way down here underneath five days worth of, of price action, not a good area of support. No, it's way up here within the previous day's price action. That's not good support. It's an elevated level, and I could easily see us just, you know, topping out here and then going back down, because um, I don't think we're out of this, out of the out of the woods. So, yeah, I just don't want to be caught at a bad level. So, as difficult as it is, I'm gonna need to be sitting on my hands for this week, for the most part. There's only one name that I'm looking to play, um, and it's Campbell Soup. We'll get into that in a second, but just to finish off Spy here. Just looking at the chart, it does look like we can move up to this 200 moving average. That's where we rejected off of last time. It was the 200 plus, it was this overarching um, orange wedge that goes all the way to the highs. So it was a bit, that was a big double whammy right there that caused us to have a really massive sell-off. Um, the next double whammy, I guess, would also be at the top of the orange trend line and this supply zone that I drew out. Um, those meet... Uh, this week, if, if, if we get all the way up there in the next couple of days, like 410, then we'd uh, we'd hit both of those pretty strong resistance areas and possibly start to sell off again. Or we could stop at the 200, but either way, both of those areas are above the current price. So I'm basically forecasting that we still have more room to go to the upside. How is it going to happen? I'm not sure. Are we going to go sideways for the next couple of days and then push up? Are we going to sell off and then push up? Or are we just going to go straight up? I don't know. That's what makes this difficult because I am not trusting these upwards moves and I don't want to get caught with my pants down when this thing reverses. So um, I guess all we can really do is just play the chart and the chart says we have more room to go up. So we'll see. We'll see what ends, ends up happening. The Monday morning gap will make a big difference too. If we gap up, then that only reassures me that we're still pretty strong and we could push up to these elevated levels so the only name i have for this week is campbell soup here's the chart i'm looking at the 48 strike that's paying about 30 dollars in premium which is good um this has not been benefiting from this market rally i think what's happening is you know this is a pretty defensive name um and, and in, a, in an environment where everything's selling off Campbell Soup is acting as a nice defensive name for investors to put their money in when risk on assets like tech stocks are selling off. You, you jump out of those names and you put your name into a more defensive, trustworthy name like a McDonald's or, in this case, Campbell Soup. 
pretty much consumer staple companies. This has been on a pretty decent uptrend since um, December 2021. I have this, this white trend line here. We're pretty damn close to it. We also have the 200 moving average that we just about hit on Friday. Um, and we popped up. So these last couple of days, while the market's been rallying, Campbell Soup's been selling off. But it has been finding support. It's been having these lower wicks on these daily candles. So buyers are stepping in on this thing when it gets a little too extended to the downside. I'm playing the 48 strike. It's near the 200 moving average. We have this ascending white line, white trend line in our favor too. I think being assigned at 48 would would be fine. And then we have this whole area of support, of a demand zone, that every time it kind of has been getting down here, we've been popping up. I mean, it just happened on Friday. We sold off to this area and we got bought back up. So this is the best name I can find for this week. I think it has a few things going for it. It's been pretty defensive up to this point. And because I don't think we're out of the woods yet with you know this bear market, I would expect this to go back up and money to come back into this name when risk on assets like a DocuSign, which has been doing well, you know, sell back off again. And all of a sudden it's not a good name to be in. So that's what I'm looking at. And that's paying about $30 premium, which is good. And this is really it. This is the only name I can really play this week. Everything else is just too elevated. ZIM is another one that I'm in. I mean, I have shares and I have a covered call. And I want to sell puts on this one too, but it's just way too up there. I want to be selling puts at $22, $21, not way up here like $26, $25. Who knows? Maybe we continue this rally or we go sideways and all those put and all those elevated strikes that I could be selling would expire worthless and I would be fine. You know, maybe, but I got to think about what if that doesn't happen? I don't want to put myself in a, in a bad position here. Um, ZIM has its own problems right now. I have a covered call at the 27 strike, which we are above right now. ZIM, ZIM closed at 2708. So my covered call is on the money. It expires this week. I have a net credit of $60 or 60 cents, which is a very good credit, but it needs to expire worthless and we're pushing up. And if this rally continues in the market and with ZIM, then I could be in trouble. Then I could be in a pretty tough pickle where I'm like, I'm going to be forced to either, you know, take assignment down here and take a big loss on the shares, or I just close the call outright for a loss and then reassess the situation. It actually has earnings this week on the 16th. So that's another wrench in the, in the cog pretty much. It's going to be a very wild week with this one because we just, one, we have the natural rally of the market and two, we have earnings. So if, if everything goes, if it's a perfect storm of just positivity and the market keeps going up and then ZIM has positive earnings, you know, it could be way up here. We could be at like the $32 level. ZIM could really rally and then it gaps up from earnings and keeps going and we're up at like $33, which would be fantastic for my shares. Like that's awesome. We're actually getting close to my cost basis, which we haven't been close for months. This is crazy. But I'm locked in at the 27 strike with a covered call. So it doesn't even matter that it's up here because my call is way down here. So I'd be in a really tough spot. I'd have to close the call for a big loss and then hope that the, the shares continue to go up. That's one option. Or I keep rolling the 27 call out to the next week, giving myself more time and then hope that the shares go down. You can see how that's a tough situation. I have two choices and each choice requires me to hope a different thing. Either I hope that the price goes up or I hope that the price goes down. And that is a tough situation because they're complete opposites. So I have to be on the right side of, of the future price action. I have to pretty much call it correctly or I'll be screwed. Because if I close the call for a loss and hope that the shares go up and then they don't, then I'm just going to have a big loss on the call and that's it. Yeah, I'll have nothing to show for it. There'll be no pot. There'll be no silver lining to it all. Um, I would have been better off just holding the call, rolling it out and having it expire worthless and not take any loss at all. If I decide to roll the call out to um, next week and the shares keep going up and all of a sudden the shares are at like 37, 38, 
well then, crap, I was much better off closing the call for a loss and then watching my shares appreciate and make that loss back through share appreciation and then sell a new call up here or something. This is a tough one. So we're just going to have to watch it play out. We're going to have to see what the market does, and then we're going to have to see how earnings play out. Um, I'm not going to have to make a decision until really after it releases earnings on Thursday. So either Thursday or Friday is going to have to be the, the time where I make the decision. And, um, you know, maybe if we sell off during the week before earnings, I can close this call for, for a profit, for a partial profit, and just get rid of it entirely. That's one option. Um, we'll have to see. But, yeah. Playing Campbell Soup at the 48 strike right here, and then that's it. I'm just watching everything else. If, ZI, if ZIM actually sells off from earnings, I might be able to sell another put, which is great. Everything else, though, I mean, I'm going to have to wait for it to sell off, really. Everything is way too elevated for me to sell puts, so that kind of sucks. Um, if this was a bull market, I wouldn't be as afraid to sell puts at these elevated areas not necessarily at support but we're not in a bear market i don't believe this bull mar this i'm sorry we're not in a bull market and i don't believe the bear market is over so i gotta play a little cautious this week which is fine the market's always going to be here you don't have to be in a trade every single day um patience is key patience is key so that's it guys that is it thank you all for watching let me know if you're playing the wheel what you're planning on doing for this week um, otherwise, just sit back and wait for another midweek update video that I should be releasing on Wednesday. So, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.